Barry's Best Honey. I'm Mike and I do bees. Welcome back to Southeast Louisiana. Well, folks, we are on the way to the bee yard that is in town. I am going to harvest honey. That's right. Uh, August, I keep saying August, October 22nd, and I am going to harvest honey. Now, I'm going to get some questions. I know there's questions in your mind. Harvesting honey this late, you're trying to put, you know, honey away for the bees for winter, all that stuff, and it is all true. But we'll go through that as I pull the boxes off uh, of the hives. We'll have time. I've got fume boards to run and things like that. So I'll do a little more explaining as to the method of my badness as we get out there. But I'm a shift on the fly kind of go guy sometimes. There's there's things that I decide that, uh, you know, even though I may have never done certain, certain things before or first time doing this or I've done that in the past, blah, 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 uh, I shift on the fly sometimes just to uh, accommodate what's going on, different types of things going on in the season, and that's kind of the deal now. So we'll go through all that. But that is a prime reason why I don't do how-to videos. I can tell you how I do. That's what I do. I tell you how I do. And maybe you can glean from it. Maybe you can't. But uh, hey, that's just how it is. It's a vlog. It's just a video log of my season, year to year, day to day, weekend to weekend, summer to summer, winter to winter, fall to fall, spring to spring. All right, guys, let's go out there. Well, folks, these bees are absolutely working. Even the weak one is working. A lot of pollen coming in. And it is so strong with goldenrod right now. I mean, super strong. Need smell of vision is what we need. I love the smell. It smells like life. So, I'm going to take these honey supers off. That I have on. That are full of honey. I know two of them out here have honey. And when I went out there and told you I was doing a honey harvest at the beginning, when I threw that out there, it's not like this is going to be a major harvest. I think I got about four supers that are partially full of honey. Um, these being the most. I got about, um, I don't know, 14 frames of honey out here. Basically almost two full boxes. And then at home I got um, one that's pretty full. And then I got another one that's about half full. So, I'm and there may be a few more. And I'll leave space on some of these just because they are pounding away at the goldenrod. So, um, but I'll go into it more. Let's get let's get uh, the smoker going and we'll pull these off. So, as most of you guys know, I do use fume boards. Um, I got one here. Got my smoker lit. We're gonna go place a fume board on this. And I do like to have all my hives down to doubles or singles going into winter. But some of these hives are so big, you almost hate to take the space from them. Gonna get her some pollen. I'm gonna go ahead and get the full supers off for sure. And then may go go forward and go ahead and take. I'm probably gonna take. Yeah, I'll probably take them all off, um, just to clear them down to doubles and singles. So let me get started. Show you my fuming method. It's just like everybody else's, and just like you've seen in past videos. So I'm using your normal. This one I think is from Daydan, and I'm using this year's. What I used was Honey Be Gone. Most of the time I used Honey Bandit for years. But I needed something in bulk. That's a lot of, a lot of bees. Let me look for the queen. She shouldn't be up past in this honey super, but you just never know. Stranger things have happened, and I just fume them, guys. Um, this has got a lot of honey in it. And I leave a little crack, and we just fume them down. And I got a little blower, I'll blow the residual out. I'd like to move this super off as well. I just put it on here to store it. I might just leave these storage ones on for now. Actually, what I might do is give these over to here. Because this is a massive colony over here. And I, I sure hate to crowd them. So I'm going to get another fume board we're going to do this one. Let's 
So I know this particular box, I put this on for storage. And I'm telling you now, they're already putting honey back in it. And that's goldenrod because it's yellow. They sure are. So while I'm fuming these out, I'll tell you what I'm talking about as far as this honey harvest. So these are boxes that were left over from the summertime. And I like to have all my boxes down into doubles for the winter or singles if that's what they are. Like this one, I may need to reduce it. This one here, it's kind of weak. And I like to have them configured for what they're going to go into spring and grow into. And so these boxes that are left over definitely going to come off because they got honey in them. They may have a little bit of goldenrod mixed in, but most of it is summer from whatever they found before the drought really struck. Um, and whatever came in after the drought kind of subsided when we first got that rain, we noticed the flow. So I'm not leaving any boxes light. That's what I want to let you know. I know it's going into winter, but these doubles, they're heavy. Like the box, this first one, this one is loaded. That double right there, that second double is flat full of honey. Like it's full. Probably at least seven of ten frames are full of honey. More than enough, plus what's left in the bottom. More than enough honey for these bees to survive. So there's not an issue there. I'm not going to leave anybody light. I'm not robbing their honey from them just to get extra honey. Um, I'm taking this because I want these off of there and harvested in the bucket and leave them with what they need for the winter which is at least 40 pounds probably more than that it's probably that one there's probably got at least 60 or 70 pounds of honey in it between the two boxes so that's that's why i'm doing this i'm getting it and stripping it off i need to get everything stripped down and uh ready for winter this is the other one that y'all have seen this is what hillco sells These bees are not happy bees. They came out of there with a vengeance and put the venom in me. So this is the other box I want to take right here. I'm going to leave them that third box. What I'm gonna do is pull these boxes later. I think that's my decision now. So what I'm gonna do is uh, pull the honey that I planned on. I'm gonna leave one super on that big one and I'm gonna move that super off the number two and stick it over here because that one, the second one over, they'll be fine in two boxes. This one's gargantuous. And uh, what I need to do is make sure they have space. They're putting honey in now. So we've run all of them out and I'm gonna blow them down now. And I blow them down just in case a queen might be up here. I don't see hardly any bees though. That's just to be sure we got them out. Now, y'all hear me talk about Kenny a lot. That's, that's a fellow beekeeper, a buddy, friend. And one day he said, I blow them down. I don't want to get a queen because we don't run excluders. I'm like, ah, oh, man, she's hardly ever up there. Well, that year I had a queen in my extractor, so <laughs> I started doing like like he does on that one that's over top of the brood. Although the second box is full of honey, she's most likely not here and there's not a lot of bees. I don't want to take any chances. So now I flip it up, blow the rest out because it's only one or two and it won't be her. And uh, put this in a truck. Yeah, a few bees. I'm gonna put another super on top of here because this is a very packed colony. If you don't like the smell of goldenrod, you don't wanna be out here now. Yeah, that's pretty empty. A Little bit of honey in there. So, but the bees aren't super numerous. put that right here
Now this nest is fine. They had brood in the top. They can backfill that, which they probably already have, and they'll be all right. We can open them and look real quick. It's full of honey up top. Wow. They have filled this up. Oh, it's full of honey. See, these hives are super heavy. And then when I look at this one here. Oh my gosh. Yeah, no problem. Good amount of honey. When it's that yellow, it's goldenrod. Good yellow goldenrod. I've got like a Almost a licorice taste. It's pretty different. Oh, the summer gun is full of honey in the top, though. Oh, a roach. So, folks, I'm still out here on these colonies pulling some. I'm pulling empty supers now, just getting everything off. I want to show you this one. I'm going to leave this super on for now. But if you look in this colony, look at this. This is my strong, strong colony. Um. I'm going to tell you what, this colony here, this is a brood frame, brood box, brood super, had brood in it that I put on, uh, I don't know, I put them on not long after harvest, I'm going to show you this, almost full of goldenrod, look at that pretty yellow, that yellow wax. That's how you can definitely tell it's goldenrod. So this whole box is goldenrod. I'm going to leave it on and let them cap it. Because if this one's full, which I can rock this one up. I didn't do it. But let's look. I imagine. Golly, there's a lot of honey in this thing. That down in there, there's also plenty of honey. I'm going to take it off and feel it. Feel. See how heavy they are. Oh my gosh, yeah. 50 pounds at least. That box is. So this one's full of honey. They stuffed the top one full. So I can take that box in a couple weeks. Let these bees finish this flow. Then I'll take it from them and that'll still leave them plenty of honey. And we can get this thing reduced down to a double. This will be one I split in February, guaranteed. Uh, the singles, even those are heavy, like this one. It's, I wish you could feel it, but it's probably 40 pounds. So it, it's got a decent weight to it, and they've got more flow to go. I don't know if you guys noticed or not, but I got this veil on. It's a pretty neat veil. Uh, for me, it works a little better with a hat. That's what I wore with it last time. But I like this thing, man. It sucks down on my shirt and uh, comfortable. I bought this because, you know, you see me out here without my jacket and all on. Um... But I'm not doing heavy work and blowing and going through the bees and really stirring them up. I'm okay without wearing a jacket. But if I'm just going to go get busy and start just moving and going through a bunch of hives, you know, going deep digs down into the brood nest and all, I usually wear full gloves and jacket. So that's why you see me like this. This isn't, this isn't a change. This isn't something I'm doing different. This is just uh, how I prefer to do it. It's a little cooler, a little easier. Uh... I don't have to deal with the jacket if I'm not doing a deep dive. So, anyway, I'm gonna get to the honey house. So I am going to stack this up and put fans on it because I can't get to it this evening. And uh, not that I'm concerned about it being too wet. The problem is 
hive beetles. If they've laid eggs in those, I need to dry and get that dry uh, air blown across those eggs to dry them out and kill them. I got 35% humidity in there right now. And at 55% you kill those eggs. You don't kill those eggs and leave them. They'll actually hatch and you'll have small hive beetle larvae infest your frames. And I don't want them to infest my frames. Still got three boxes out here and that'll give me six total. Uh, at least three, maybe four, but three for sure. And they're not all full. There's like four or five frames in one, maybe a couple in another. So it's not like I'm getting six full boxes of honey, but we'll find out. I tell you what, anybody that doesn't like the smell of goldenrod, best not come in this honey house. Whoo, strong. So we got six super sitting there. Um, and they're not all full. Uh, most of them have four or five frames. I'm just going to extract them and uh, I'll show you what we got. But yeah, I got them off. There's about a total of... Uh, Maybe five or six supers still out. Those are on hives, giving them space. Let's let the flow finish up. And I will snatch all those off, but I took a few singles down onto singles. They're good and heavy. Uh, I got them uh, ready to break down for winter. Get these cleaned out. It's almost done, folks, almost done. All right, folks, let's take a walk out to the honey house. It's next day, 23rd of uh, October, and I'm harvesting honey. Uh, we, we don't get fall flows around here. And I don't think this is a fall flow harvest. This is just a residual leftover prior drought, after drought, and we'll go through that in just a second. Let's, uh, let's see what we got in here. Oh, not as strong anymore. There it is. Oh, we're packed up with junk. Who else's honey houses just get loaded up as the off season approaches and then through the off season to where there's just like, junk everywhere but I can work around it will we use our maxent today I don't know it's such a pain to clean the maxent um, but the hillco it's buried in honey buckets so I don't know we'll figure it out we're gonna get a mixture of some goldenrod and, and there's probably gonna be I'd say probably half of this is gonna be half to uh, a third is going to be goldenrod and the rest is going to be residual left over so it'll be interesting to see how it tastes. I've done goldenrod one other year where we had a great flow. I got like a super or two off of it and the honey was fine. Uh, I got some goldenrod another year that really tasted strange so I don't know. Who knows what we'll get. So here we are folks. Sorry about the AC but I got to cool it down in here. I'm all set up and ready to go. I'm going to use the Maxent. Um, now I'm not bad mouthing my Maxent. This thing has served me well for years. It's gonna be hard to use that after using that Hillco Ultra Max. I'm, I'm telling you, uh, John Hill at Hillco has done a great job with these extractors and cuts a third of the price off the top compared to what you get at the other places. But, but my Max it has been good. Um, it's very loud. It's very rough, but it works well. I used it for years. It holds six frames um, radially, but it runs good. Now this is the older motor. I probably had couple years after I bought this they came out with the motor where you could spin this free now you can't now you have to actually rotate it to load your frames but it runs good it's balanced well it's loud but it does fine the problem I'm gonna be spoiled with is how smooth the Hillco is and this thing is a pain to clean and while you can see that it has a conical bottom it has you you pay all that money for a maxent and, and maxent's good don't get me wrong but they put a plastic gate valve on here honey gate and so it sits above the rim so you get all this honey that gets trapped in here like an inch deep of honey and that's so frustrating but uh and it all stays around it doesn't tilt like john's does but uh but it runs good i'm not i'm not gonna ever say maxent's bad i just like hillco because they're they're here for the beekeeper, man, and they listen to the beekeeper. As I understand it, Maxent has begun to listen to the beekeeper better now because I think people are feeling the pinch from these other companies that are coming in and saying, hey, beekeeper, we got something a little different for you. And uh, I'm happy about that. I'm happy. Competition uh, makes things stronger. I just don't want to dig all that honey. I got honey packed all around that. I got honey stashed in every corner around here and the concentration of it's right there and I don't feel like moving all that. It 
Yeah, that's 16% honey right there. And this is all residual. This is not goldenrod. This is what was left over from the summer harvest. You can almost look at it. The thickness matches up, the color. It's not got that yellow tint to it. And I know there's some goldenrod in there because this room was reeking yesterday. I, I, you know, guys, I might get a bucket out of this. Maybe two. We'll see. A bucket and a half. I don't even know. folks well that is a wrap with the honey I didn't keep you've seen me harvest before I didn't want to take you through all those frames a lot of parcels but most of the frames that did have honey were like at least three quarters full one box was all the frames had honey and most of the rest had like five to seven frames and they weren't full full frames so it was about what I expected I said about five gallons maybe a second bucket sure enough uh, we got a five gallon bucket full of dark fall honey all 23 seal that up definitely want to label it because it definitely tastes different and then i got this little bucket it's got just a bit in it from the extractor i'm not sure how big that bucket is but anyway you see that little bit in it i think it's two and a half gallons or so i always use this bucket to finish out what i've got and i've got at least a couple gallons in here it's at the top of the gate uh uh honey gate so that means it's at least at least a gallon and a half or so that's usually what that yields and that will that will top off that bucket i'm pretty sure i hope it don't go over so you're talking 70 pounds of honey that's a good deal i, I mean come the end of the season if i'm 70 pounds short i'd sure be happy to have it right i don't know if you can tell that's two inches to three inches deep and it's up three inches away from the wall but you can see your level there inside this thing is gonna hold this much honey right about right about there it's gonna hold that much honey down to about right there and about that wide inside and so that that's a lot of honey and that's where the Hilco extractor last couple years I have not had to do all this tilting and everything so I'm gonna have to tilt this thing over See, I'm going to tilt it over just to get this honey out of here. That's what I'm doing today. Wrapping it up for good this time. This is going to be the last harvest. Uh, and again, it's not a fall harvest. I don't do a fall harvest. It's just excess boxes from this very, very strange year that, that gave us some residual honey after we harvested, but then shut it down during the dearth like it should. But then drought came when we should usually start picking back up. And it's just been wild. Uh, so just another sign of the year that we've had having having some excess honey here in uh, in, in in october which i know guys that actually uh mr ed does it uh many years he'll he'll leave boxes on that aren't full and he'll go back in october november and, and grab them up all right folks i sure hope you enjoyed this video i sure enjoyed making it for you guys it's barry's best honey i'm mike and i do bees Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful week, and may God bless you. We'll see y'all later.